In just five minutes, let's leverage the GQL library as well as subgrounds to query subgraphs with Python. So I hate to admit it, but recently I've been using Node.js a lot more than I've been using Python. Although last week something reignited my interest in using Python. As I was speaking on a space with Flipside, I heard about an organization called Playgrounds. They develop various subgraph related APIs, but specifically what I found interesting was their Python library subgrounds. It essentially simplifies the process of retrieving data from and interacting with subgraphs. So after some experimentation, I thought it would be worth to cover this on a bite-sized building video. So in just five minutes, let's leverage the GQL library as well as subgrounds to interact with subgraphs using Python. All right, so let's jump right into it. To quickly set some expectations for the code that we'll be writing today, this will be roughly 70 lines of code, and we're going to start by using the GQL library to directly write a GraphQL query and push it to a chain stack subgraph. After that, we'll use the subgrounds library to query the same data. In this case, we'll use a subgraph for a pancake swap that indexes token pairs. So let's start by using the GQL library. We'll first need to write two import statements, one for GQL and one for the HTTP transport object. So we could do from GQL import GQL and clients. And now we can also do from gql.transport.aio HTTP import AIO HTTP transport. So now that we have GQL imported, we'll need to define our subgraph URL. We can save this into a variable just called chain stack subgraph. To define this variable, we'll need to actually deploy our subgraph. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll head over to the chain stack console here, navigate over to subgraphs, then click on create subgraph. And here, as I mentioned, this will be indexing pairs on PancakeSwap. So I'll be deploying it on the Binance Smart Chain mainnet. So we can select BNB chain, then Binance Smart Chain mainnet, and then we can click on next. Now we can enter some of our details. In this case, it'll just be the name and the project that the subgraph will be assigned to. I'll name this Pancake subgraph and just assign it to my project Amity DeFi. All right, so now that we've made the subgraph, we'll need to scroll down and copy the deployment command. Now in here, I'll be redeploying a subgraph that I made for a video a few weeks ago. But if you'd like to learn how to make a subgraph, then I also have a video covering that. So you can go to the Byte Size Building playlist below and feel free to watch that video, make the subgraph, and then come back. All right, so I'm in the path of my subgraph, so I can just go ahead and paste in the deployment command and then enter. I can select a version label. I'll just do what it says, B0.0.1. It'll now compile the subgraph, upload it to IPFS, and now it's deployed on Chainstack. As you can see, it's right here and it's already synced with the blockchain. So we can scroll down and grab our query URL and then paste that into the variable here. All right, so now we'll need to use this variable in the transport definition. So we can just name this transport and set it equal to AIO HTTP transport. That's what we imported up here. And then in the constructor here, we can set URL equal to Chainstack subgraph. So now that we have the subgraph deployed and the transport defined, we'll need to create the GraphQL client. We can do this by creating a variable called the client and setting that equal to client. Of course, that's also what we imported up here. And then transport equals transport. We can set fetch schema from transport equal to true. So now we need to actually write the query itself. We can do this in a variable called query and set this equal to GQL. And then we can open up the query here query will get a little bit complicated because I'll be pulling a large amount of data from each pair that it lists. So this is the query right here. As we can see, we're pulling pairs, the first five, and they are ordered by created at timestamp in descending order. So we're essentially getting the five most recent pairs created on PancakeSwap. And now we can execute the query and save the result. We can do this in a variable called result, and then we can run client.execute and then query. So perfect. At this point, we've imported GraphQL. We've defined our subgraph, defined the transport and the client variables, then we built the query and executed the query. So the next thing we'll need to do is print out each pair that it gets from the query. We'll do this just by running a simple for loop that loops through each pair in the query and prints out all of its associated information. We can do this with for pair in result pairs, and then we can start just printing all the attributes. All right, so those are all of our print statements. We're essentially printing out the pair ID, information about the first token of the pair, information about the second token of the pair, the reserves, prices, etc. So at this point in the script, we have a fully functional GraphQL query to the subgraph that we deployed on Chainstack. If it works, we'll see this query return the five most recent pairs deployed on PancakeSwap, and then all the information about those pairs printed to the console. So let's go ahead and run it and see if it works. And there we go. It looks like it worked. So that was pretty easy. In just about 45 lines of code, we've defined a subgraph, written the query, and printed out all of the information. And here we have a very data-rich response. But let's move on to achieving the same thing with subgrounds. All right, so again, to reiterate, subgrounds is a Python library that simplifies interaction with subgraphs. It abstracts away the need for raw GraphQL manipulation and overall makes the process of querying subgraphs in Python on a little bit more intuitive. So let's start by importing subgrounds. We can do from subgrounds, import 
subground. So here we can define our subgrounds master variable. We can call this SG and just set it equal to the subgrounds object that we imported. Perfect. So now we'll also need to quickly define our subgraph endpoint. We can do this in a variable called chainstack subgraph and head back to chainstack, grab the query URL and paste it in here. So now we need to load the subgraph into subgrounds. We can do this by creating a variable called subgraph and set that equal to sg.load subgraph. And then we can pass in the chainstack subgraph endpoint that we defined above. All right, so now we can actually make the query itself. We can do this by creating a variable called latest pairs and then setting that equal to subgraph.query and then dot pairs. And here we can set these same parameters that we did in our manual GraphQL query before. So of course we can do order by and then subgraph.pair that created at timestamp. We can do the order direction, which will be descending, and we'll only be pulling the first five. So perfect. Now that we made the query, you can see that the actual format here looks pretty different compared to the GQL library. And here we have a much more Pythonic way of doing it. All right, so now we need to execute the query and save it to a variable called result. So we can set result equal to sg.query. We're going to save this result in a pandas data frame. So we can do query underscore df, then open up a list here. And in here, we'll need to define all of the pair attributes that we want returned. So I went ahead and added all of those attributes here. These are the same attributes that were being queried by the previous implementation using the GQL library. And then all we have to do is print the result. Okay, so at this point, we've imported subgrounds, defined our base subgrounds variable, defined the subgraph, loaded the subgraph, we built the query, and executed the query. Let's run it and see if it works. And there we go. Looks like it works. We have all five of our pairs. And of course, this is defined in a data frame. So we have 14 columns with all of the data that we asked for. This was episode 15 in Chainstack's Bite Size Building series. By the way, I can't believe we're already at 15 episodes. This is awesome. If you'd like to watch the 14 other episodes just like this one, then you can do so through the link below. Additionally, in this video, I launched a Chainstack subgraph on Binance Smart Chain. If you'd like to learn more about the power and convenience of Chainstack subgraphs, then you can also do so through the link below.